Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today on Everything Aero Pilates. Today I want to talk to you a little about, a little bit about machine maintenance. Um, so this machine I've had since March, so it probably doesn't need a lot of maintenance. But even in those five months, it probably has some uh, dust or dirt on the rails just from the dust in the air when it settles on the rails and you roll over it, especially if your um, rails are oiled. Um, which is a maintenance thing, but the, the dust is going to kind of get into this like grimy stuff. You also could have hair. Now, even though when you're laying down, this is one thing I love about this machine because there is a machine out there, we're going to compare those later in a different video, um, but there's a machine out there that is often considered instead or as well as this machine. It's like, which one should I get between these two machines? Um, and every time you use that machine and your hair is not pinned up, not this one, but the other machine, um, it will yank out chunks of your hair. It's it's actually really painful. This machine, when I have the long hair, when I have the short hair, and I'm laying down, my hair just can be, even be in the middle of the rails. And the way that it's set up, your hair does not get caught. So um, that's a really amazing thing. However, somehow if your hair is falling on the rail or something, it's going to get caught up in the wheels. And so that does happen. And um, so the wheels can get, have actual hair around them. So that's one of the parts of the maintenance. So there's just little things like that um, that you can do to maintain your Aero Pilates. So when should you do this? You should check about maintenance on your Aero Pilates um, when you start to hear a little more squeaking, when you feel like it's not rolling as smoothly. You also have maintenance on your cords. If you feel like your cords are too loose, they don't give you the resistance they used to. So those are all times that you're gonna need maintenance. But let's just talk about mm, day to day or I mean every couple day maintenance um, and that is especially with a black machine in a black frame is dusting is um, you know I mean it's it's your own choice how dusty you want to let it get but my machine has been um, two days <laughs> since I dusted it off and uh, if you get even the mat under here because it's black in it and just because of the material it really kind of collects the dust I've been letting my boys use the machine and they are um, outside a lot and so the things that are on their feet, even when they take their socks off, I don't even know. It just seems to the machine gets a lot dirtier when they're using it as well. And they don't always use this machine, but when they do, it's more maintenance. So the more people you have using the machine, the more maintenance you're gonna have. So I'm just gonna show you real quickly. If you look, all under here on the mat is just little pieces of dirt, dust, um, maybe paper, I mean whatever it is, it's just really just come out of the room and been stuck onto the mat. So I'm going to show you how I clean the mat. This is like a knockoff Swiffer Sweeper and I just get the little pad that goes to it. You can use, um, oftentimes I use a paper towel or a reusable t-shirt, whatever you want, but um, somebody gave me these little pads that are supposed to be extra grabby, so I'm definitely not going to let those go to waste. Um, but I just use it and I just kind of push it across the mat. And I, I'm going to go ahead and pull it across and out flat. It's kind of like sweeping, but the broom does not have the same effect as this. This is really going to grab everything off your mat. So I'm going to continue to do that. Alright, so I'm just grabbing everything off the mat pushing it to the side, and what I love about this duster is I can pretty much, it's kind of like those big dusters at like Walmart or Target that they push around the stores, and um, you can pretty much just push the dust out to the side where you can then sweep it up, vacuum it up, whatever you're gonna do. So the mat is dusted really well from this. I pushed it out, swept it up, everything is good. Now, um, one of the things that I think is getting on this mat a lot is that this is where I've unboxed quite a few Aero Pilates and the little styrofoam beams or beads that I have tried to vacuum up but multiple, multiple times. Every time I think they're gone, they're not. But it's because I've opened multiple. One, I think it would have been gone by now. But um, it keeps happening. <laughs> so, But when you're consistently opening Aero Pilates boxes in an office room, those little styrofoam beads get everywhere. When the fan blows, they blow and the, the mat, it just has like this um, attraction and grabs them. So that's why those were all over the mat and that's part of a lot of where there's actually all over the mat. But other dust particles and things as well from um, just coming in and out of the room. So 
you know, dust is one of those things that we never get rid of. Now we're going to talk about just dusting the machine down. You can use a microfiber cloth that is really good because it grabs things very easily, but I'm just using a towel because that's what I have up here, and I'm just going to general dust. Now if I had a spot um, on the mat, I can get a, a little wet cloth, wipe up like if I drop some coffee or something on there, I can wipe it up. The same thing for my platform, anywhere on my platform, but general dusting looks like this. I'm going to start at the bottom, I'm going to roll the platform back, and I'm also going to pop off these shoulder pads because <laughs> there gets to be quite a bit of dust under the shoulder pads and it's just something that kind of looks gross. So let's dust it. I also wipe off this bed as needed with a wet cloth, but it's um, it's not too often. But you know, if you think about like what's on the bed from when you're working out, it's kind of a gross spot. So just wipe it off as often as you want. And I'm just dusting and I'm, I'm clawing in my hand to really get into that rail to get the dust off. And then while I'm here, I'm actually gonna do the stand underneath as well. And then down here, the stand underneath, the stand underneath, because all of that just gets pretty gross and dusty. And so here's the metal bar that you pick up when you're um, folding your Aero Pilates. I'm dusting that off. And now I'm gonna move the platform back down, continue on the rails, Go ahead and do under with the platform or the stand. And then on top with the end cap and the head cap. Okay, I also just do the top of my um, my pull-up bar because it gets dusty too. Sometimes your pillow might get dusty, but probably not if you use it too much. And then I lift up my headrest and I dust under that. That has um, quite a bit of stuff in it. I take off my shoulder pads and I'm really getting in that crease and just around on the creases. You can be um, more careful than I am, you can be less careful than I am, whatever is comfortable for you. So I'm getting into that crease and just dusting around. And then you have the crease in between the head and the actual carriage and I just kind of stick the corner or whatever I'm using in there and kind of dust that off too. I mean, who doesn't love dust? Just dead skin. Who doesn't love dead skin cells all over you? So now that is dusted, um, the next thing that I could do, if I start having a squeaking noise, and I can actually see already, there is some dust that again, like I said, from having, the AeroPlotties comes with slightly oiled rails, but then you oil them throughout your time using it as well. So the dust is going to get on the oil and mix with the oil and make kind of like this um, dirt paste. You can see it really well on the white frames. Um, on this frame, it just looks like kind of like a gray spot, and um, it almost looks like um, a tiny, tiny bit of gum, like when it's on the road and you, people have stepped on it. It just looks like a tiny piece of that. So now I'm going to get, now I can get this wet, but I'm going to just use it dry and I'm going to just kind of scrape that off. Now, if I had. I will try to show you more detail on a um, white frame, but let's go ahead and look at what that got off of my rail. I mean, that is kind of gross. So that little spot just came off my rail. Kind of gross. So now I'm going to do the other side. And now I'm, I'm clamping down, focusing on the bottom rail. Um, that, because that's where the wheel is actually going to roll. Let's see how badly this is. Sometimes I get my nail involved to do like a little bit of a scraping. Okay, that was definitely less. It just has a tiny little spot. Again, you could use water with this. The reason I don't always use water is the water is going to um, interfere with the oil rails. So you're just going to have to re-oil them. And that's easy enough. I'm just doing the bottom of the rails now. This cloth is getting a little bit gross. It's really not too bad because of because it's only five months old. Um, if you didn't do this, and you guys see how relatively quick this is, this is really kind of your quick maintenance um, that you should do, I don't know, every couple months. I would do it for sure. You can do it every month if you're more comfortable with that. Um, but what I'm going to show you in a little bit is what you want to do maybe like once a year. 
um, and that's when we check the wheels. So I'm going to do that in just a moment, but right now we're just checking the rails. But anytime you do have a squeak in your rail, you wipe them down like this. Could you just? It could have just been a more dusty season. You could have more junk on your way, rails, like the little gummy stuff. And now we're going to oil them. For oiling your rails, I'm just using organic sweet almond oil. And um, you can use olive oil, your kitchen oil. You just want to make sure it's not like an acidic oil. This is just an organic sweet almond oil. I've used olive oil. I've used coconut oil. You can use whatever you have for your rails. And I just dipped a little onto the cloth. And now again, I'm going to pinch with my finger. And it's really important to do the bottom side of the rail. And so I'm just going to oil that in. I'm going to do that on both sides down, and then I'm going to head up and do it on both sides up. Making sure I have that spot where I have the oil, and just oiling them. Okay, again, now that they're freshly oiled, um, the dust is going to stick to them a little better, so I might have to wipe them without, an, without more oil. You can just check them and wipe them down as needed if you start to feel um, inconsistency with your machine. And even though this, this machine is relatively new, it did not need oil, but it is. I can already tell just from moving it back and forth how much smoother that those wheels are going to cross those rails. For your once a year, or really whenever you think you need it maintenance, um, I think once a year is probably sufficient, but you know maybe you want to be more careful. Or maybe there's no problem and you don't even think that you need it. Um, but whenever you decide to do it, around once to twice a year, this is going to be your more expensive maintenance. So we've already dusted, we've oiled the rails. Um, now we're going to take this off of the stand, rolling up your machine. I'm taking off that cord that I put on. I'm going to roll my carriage back, grab this middle beam, and I like to kind of push with this arm. Depending on your space, depending on your space, you might have to move it around a little. I like to push with this foot to get it in, and my machine is now closed. For our next part of maintenance, we have to unhook the pulley risers. So I'm going to roll this machine, kind of turn it around where you can see. One pulley riser already fell off. Sometimes that happens when you're rolling up the machine, and I'm talking about the pulley riser hooks. So the second one I'm going to just take off, and I just lift the machine back so I can get to it, and I unhook it. When you're folding a machine, one thing that's really important to check if you're folding it every day is to lift up your platform just a little to make sure you're not bending your headrest. Your headrest, um, your headrest adjustment system can get caught under the carriage and it can start to bend and you don't want that. It'll still function fine if that happens, don't, don't panic, but it's really good to just remember to just do a quick lift, it'll adjust, and you're good to go. Now all I'm going to do is lift this carriage up and off the rails. I just stand behind it, I grab onto the carriage, lift up, lift up, lift up. If you are not as short as me, this is easier. Whew. But I'm five foot, I can do it, I know you can do it. Um, if you have problems with it, have some of your family members help you with this part of maintenance. So now the carriage is off, I'm gonna roll this guy out of the way. And I'm gonna lay the carriage down nicely. For this part of the maintenance, I have my carriage basically resting on my shoulder pads and it gives me like a nice angle to work with it. You could have, this is from the, the um, lighter carriage, it's from the smaller frame, so it's definitely easier to maneuver. I could put it up here on my futon couch and lay it there and, and do the same thing. But what you are gonna need for this part, and what we're doing is we're checking the wheels. Um, the first thing when you check the wheels, so when you see the wheels, you might see some dirt. And these aren't really bad at all. They hardly have any dirt on them, but because, and you can kind of try to wipe these while they're still on the track, you're just not gonna be able to do it as well. But now that I have it off, I'm just gonna really wipe around my wheels. Now again, this is not necessary. I would say 
once a year, maybe every two years. My mom has been using hers on and off more consistently for the last few months, but um, for two years she's used it on and off. And she is starting to squeak. This is a maintenance I need to do on her machine. Um, but she's been using it for two years without, and she could still use it right now. It's not, it's not causing her problems, it's just squeaking a little. So I've just wiped off all those wheels, and I used the little oil part of my cloth. You can use a wet part of your cloth, you can use whatever part of your cloth um, you want. But at this part, at this time, what I'm going to do is inspect and see if there's any hair tangled up in the wheels. And that can happen. So, these particular ones do not have hair in them. But I'm going to show you what you would do if it does have hair in it. Your tools that came with your Air Pilates, I know it's tempting to just toss these away. And if you have a really good tool set, that's perfectly fine to do. Um, and if you've already thrown it away, it's okay. What I'm going to need for the wheel is this piece right here that doubles as a screwdriver, with the Phillips screwdriver. And I'm going to use the bigger side for um, as, as a wrench. Now, this has three different things as a wrench. They're very useful for this machine. So I'm using the bigger side as a wrench, and I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the inside um, nut here. Then you do need a flathead screwdriver. And then you're going to get it hooked on. This one you're just going to hold still while you lefty loosey with your screwdriver. So I have, have it held on, turning. Here we go, lefty loosey. So the screwdriver was not giving me enough leverage, so I'm actually going to use the wrench and go lefty loosey. So. I know you can do it. Okay, I got that loose. Um, so I was just hooking on and yanking it to the lefty loosey. Um, not this is not really the you know amazing tool that it could be but it, it did the trick you just have to keep working on it get it lefty loosey and then ideally you would have a better ratchet or wrench that could work for this all right so i have the actual nut off and that looks like that i'm gonna set that aside now the actual wheel you are still going to have to unscrew it because it's screwed into the hole. It doesn't just slide in like a lot of um, big bolts or screws do. It's actually screwed in. So it won't just yank out. Do you see that? So I'm going to unscrew it now with my Phillips. It's going to be easy now that I got that loose. So the washer fell off the end now that I was unscrewing it. So um, in Aero Pilates and probably in any kind of machinery, you have a washer by every bolt and on the side of every screw. And that just helps reinforce the stability of whatever it is, the machine or the furniture. So I'm gonna give you a close up of this. This actually comes apart, which is really interesting. Okay, so you have the wheel and then this is what it looked like. It would go through, screwed in, and on the other side would be the washer on top and then the nut. And then the nut. Then on the other side that I just unscrewed, you actually have a washer. You have a, this is called the spacer, and then you have the wheel. Now, if you have a wheel that's not looking great, maybe it has some, um, not dirt, dirt can be washed off, but it has some like maybe dents in it, okay? And then here's your bolt. So, do you see the bolt? Then you have your bolt. But if you have a wheel that actually has kinks in it or chunks taken out of it, you have an option to buy a new wheel. So to put it back together, you have the bolt, the wheel, the spacer, the big washer. And now I'm going to screw it back into my machine, put the next washer on and the other, the other bolt on. So you saw how when I had that off, um, all those pieces, there could be hair, could have been hair, or tangled around those on the bolt. In which case, I would just take that hair off. I would really wipe down and oil the pieces. And now I'm going to have to actually screw, just screw it back on. Remember it goes, bolt, wheel, spacer, 
the bigger disc washer and I'm going to screw it in. your wheel back into the top hole. There is a second hole on the one side where you're folding up your machine, you can secure the little pin secures it. Um, if you guys fold up your machine, you might be familiar with that. So there's two holes here. You are going to need to use the top hole. Um, and the other ones don't have an extra hole, so it's not confusing. But for this side that I just happen to have, there is a um, top hole. Okay, so that's screwed in, and now I'm going to go ahead and get the nut put back on. I'm going to use this for a sufficient but not wonderful tool. I finger tighten it first, and then I'm going to take the big side and I'm going to tighten it the opposite way of what I loosened it. So we're going this way for this case. That is my righty tighty. And you get to a point where we're going to have to get the screwdriver back in to be the um, to be the anchor while you really tighten this this nut on. Okay, that should be pretty tight. recommend taking off the wheels um, if you really can't get the hair out like this because you can usually reach in here and kind of pull it out maybe get some tweezers and pull out hair or whatever might be around the wheel and the reason is no matter what nice screwdriver you use you are going to scratch up this wheel bolt and um, you're also going to um, put some work on the actual nut so you don't want to wear those out um, you want those to stay strong. So as long as I could, I would just get tweezers, pick out any hair um, that's in here, wipe down any fuzz that's in here, do a really good job, and then you're ready to go back on. You would do that with all four wheels. And now we are ready to put the carriage back on. So we're putting the carriage back on, we're making sure the head goes towards either the pulley risers or in this case the pull-up bar. So this is an example of a wheel that I was working on and um, it is just filled with hair. Can you guys see that? Filled with hair right there. See all that hair? So this is the kind of stuff you're going to clean out of your machine, of your wheels, on your maintenance. Now this is supposed to be a pretty good condition. See all that guys? Like new machine, but obviously it had gathered some hair in there. So, take all those pieces out, make sure it's clear. And then I'll go ahead and wipe this wheel down with a cloth, and that'll be our wheel maintenance. So you're going to line up the holes. We've done this in another video. We're lining up the wheels into the rail, lean it forward, and get the second wheel into the rail. <laughs> Yay! We're done. To open up your Aero Pilates sometimes, I actually put my foot against the other end here to hold it so that I can roll this part down. I get it out of the way pretty quickly, but sometimes it doesn't want to come apart, like it's kind of hard. So you can put your foot there, get it apart, and roll it out. Now, another thing that I would mention is a good time to, this is a good time to do this, is to make sure your pulley riser screws are really hand tightened in because they can get loose after a while, especially if you're opening and closing your machine. And then for my pull-up bar, I would get a hex and really tighten those bolts and make sure they're tight as well. So that's the other part of the maintenance that you can do. Okay, so that is maintenance on your Aero Pilates Reformer. Please let me know if you have any questions about any of those procedures. Let's talk about what we did. We did dusting of the mat underneath. We dusted down on the entire Aero Pilates and the rails. We oiled the rails. 
we um, took the carriage off, checked the wheels for hair, and you oiling the, cleaning the rails, oiling the rails, and um, checking the wheels if it's been, uh, if your Aero Pilates is a certain age, or you've been using it a certain amount of time in between, then your last check, um, those are really good things to do when your machine is starting to squeak. And then we talked about, um, we talked about changing the wheels if they have a nick in them. And I just showed you how to take off one wheel. Um, I am going to change wheels in another video because there is a reformer that needs the wheels changed. So we'll go over that whole process in a different video. And then we also talked about just tightening reform, um, the uh, pulley riser bolts and then tightening the um, top screws of the pull-up bar. So those are your options for maintenance. Again, wiping down the bed as needed. Please let me know if there's anything else you can think of for maintenance of your Aero Pilates. These are like the basics. They're, um, most of them are quick and easy to do as you desire, as you feel your Aero Pilates needs it. Um, as you, you can deal with this week as long as you want, or you can go ahead and do the maintenance, whatever you choose to do. So just keep in mind that just because there's a squeak, your machine is not ruined. It is not ruined. There's so many things that you can do to fix it, um, to help it along. They're relatively quick. I mean, I would probably love to have help with that. So um, if you have somebody that can help you, everything will go that much easier. That has your machine dusted, cleaned, your rails oiled, your wheels checked for hair and other debris and for nicks, and you are now ready to go right back on your machine. And actually, that would be the perfect reward of this maintenance is to now lay on it and do an Aero Pilates workout and relieve that stress and get that tension out of your body from moving it all around. Okay, guys, um, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Let me know if there's anything else that you do to maintain your Aero Pilates. And I will see you next time on Everything Aero Pilates.